Hi, and welcome to Learning Julia by Pack Publishing. My name is Eric Ingham, and I'm a senior desktop application developer working on visualization and simulation of scientific data in the oil industry. But I like trying lots of different things. So I also worked as an iOS developer with software architecture, user interface design, and testing. And I've even gotten time to hold a conference talk on cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. So why am I into Julia? Why do I want to tell you about Julia? Well, ever since I taught myself programming as a teenager to create my own computer games, I've been really fascinated by different programming languages, and I try a lot of them. And I've seen how they develop over the years, you know, the popularity and so on. And I think there's some common traits for the languages that become go mainstream. And that has to do with both with the simplicity of the language how easy it is to learn or how complex it is as well how well it integrates with existing platforms and whether it actually solves an important problem that hasn't really been addressed well uh, already and i think that Juliet really checks all those boxes is a really easy language to pick up and it integrates well with existing technology you can call c code uh, fortran code and even integrate it with Python packages easily. And most importantly, it solves a problem that people have, especially in the scientific community or anyone doing numerical computing, is that they have to work with often large amounts of data that they want to be able to work with interactively. And so languages like Python or Ruby might be really nice to use for that. Unfortunately, these are not really high performance languages. And so they have to implement their final solutions in, in Fortran or C. And so that means that you have to know about and deal with multiple languages. Well, Julia allows you to do away with that whole problem. You can ex do a lot of experiments because it's a really expressive and dynamic language. But at the same time, it's possible to write your final solution that requires high performance in Julia. So uh, let me tell you about what we're going to cover in this course. In section one, we're going to just look at the installation and setup of a Julia development environment. In section number two, we're going to just look at the basics of the language. It's basically going to be a tour of Julia. We're going to look at basic control flow like if statements, while loops, how to define functions, types, and so on. In section number three, uh, we're going to be working with types. So we're going to look at the type hierarchies in Julia. It's a bit unusual how that works because even numbers are in a hierarchy in Julia, which is very useful when you're doing numerical computing. And we're going to look at a unique feature in Julia, which is multiple dispatch, which allows us to actually select what kind of code we want to execute based on number of arguments at runtime. We're going to look at type conversion, you know, what happens when you got a flow in an integer and so on. And we're going to create our own type and look at how we can define operations and uh, functions that work on these types. In section four, we're going to look at input and output. So that's important. If you want to actually get anything useful work done, you have to be able to read data and output some kind of data. So I'm going to show you how you can read from files and write to files as well as network. We're just going to have a simple uh, client server going and sending data between those and look a little bit about how you deal with asynchronous behavior in Julia. And we're going to look at common format like uh, common separated values and how you can read those in Julia. In section five, we're going to talk about modules and packages. And that's really important as your programs grow, you want to be able to organize your programs so it doesn't just turn into one big mess. So that's what modules are important. If you want to 
be able to share your codes with others or use code that other people have used, then you want to know how to deal with packages. In section six, I'm going to talk about object oriented programming. And if you look through the Julia user manual, you won't actually really see object oriented programming being mentioned. And the reason for that is that Julia isn't an object oriented programming language, but a lot of us have extensive object oriented programming background. And this is really the way we're used to thinking. So we might start asking questions like, well, how do you deal with interfaces and inheritance and polymorphism in Julia? So those are the things I'm going to talk about, how you adapt your thinking into how Julia works. And one topic that's been really hot in the last years, I'm going to talk about in, in section seven, and that's functional programming. Now, Julia is not a functional programming language, but it has a lot of functional features so I'm going to contrast functional programming with object oriented programming in case you're not really familiar with the, the paradigm. I'm going to talk about some of the advantages of functional programming with some examples and talk about some common things in functional programming like higher order functions, uh, pure functions, and so on. In section eight, I'll talk about collections and by collections, I mean things like Arrays, sets, dictionaries, etc. I will talk about some of the common traits or interfaces among collections. So you can create your own collections. For instance, you create a collection, you want to be able to, for instance, iterate over it. That means implementing certain interfaces. And we're going to look at multi dimensional arrays, which is supported out of the box in Julia and really great support. I don't think really I work with multidimensional arrays in such a nice way in another language. So you can have the data queues with in three dimensions or more. You can easily work with two dimensional matrices and so on. And these are really high performance. I'm going to do a small section number nine on type unions because I think this is a really cool thing in Julia. I haven't really seen this feature in other languages. It can be used for different things, but I find it very useful for reducing a lot of code duplication, something I often wish I had when I'm writing C++ code or iOS and writing Swift code or Objective-C. And section 10, we're gonna look at parametric types. If you're a Java developer, you probably know this by the name generics. If you're from C++, you're referred to as templates. It's a bit unusual subject for a script language. So I'm going to talk about why we have parameter types in Julia and some of the benefits. So it's important for performance and also that Julia is a bit unusual in that it doesn't have a null or a nil value. And we're using actually parametric types to deal with that. And section 11 is about debugging and testing. And especially if you're from a background uh, from a statically typed language like Java or C++, I think this is a very uh, interesting section for you because debugging is going to be quite different in Julia because we're going to utilize a lot of the interactive environment that exists in Julia to debug our code. In section 12, we're going to look at metaprogramming. So this is a really cool thing in Julia, a very powerful feature that allows you to create code at runtime. And we can use macros that are, if you ever work with Lisp, it's like Lisp macros, very powerful, allows you to really define new features in the programming language itself. So this is a powerful way of for abstractions and for avoiding a lot of boilerplate code. And finally, in this section on performance, we're going to talk about maybe one of the main reasons why you want to check out Julia, which is performance. How do you get high performance in Julia? And to understand that, we're going to go through a bit how code is generated, the different steps involved, abstract and concrete types, as well as a 
term that's coined in the Julia community called type stability, which is a really important thing to understand if you want to write high performance Julia code. Now, what do you need to get into this course? Well, you don't need to have any kind of experience, any kind of previous experience with Julia. All you really need to know is have some experience with another programming language. It doesn't really matter which one in this course. I'm just going to assume that you work in one of the mainstream languages like Java, C Sharp, or Python. And another thing that's important to know is that you don't have to be doing numerical or scientific programming. This course is really open for uh, anyone, even if you're going to write a, a web server or something like that. This is really a general purpose approach to the programming language. So the goals of this course is to teach you the Julia programming language, how to work with the basic APIs, work with dictionaries, strings, IO, how to create modules for your code, packages, and debug those, test them, and tune the performance. Even if you don't have a direct need for a Julia at the moment, I think it's going to be more and more popular. But I think you'll find that it's a lot of fun to learn the Julia programming language. Uh, there's a lot of interesting concepts in Julia that will help you program or your um, competency in thinking also in your day-to-day -day programming. So I'll hope I'll see you in this course.